afternoon and evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to game two of the preliminary Yellow Solar Mid vs. Azure in the defense of the Australians. And Azure taking a very, very convincing game one. I am Dodo Yoshi, and I am alongside Zareth. Zareth, how are you this fantastic evening? I'm doing quite well. Um, I know I'm going to be completely wrecked in the morning because we're casting all night. But uh, it's totally worth it. That it is. And so we will be seeing Yellow so I mean, they're taking out that Night Stalker. It unfortunately didn't work well for them, but they definitely don't want to make sure Zul picks it up and see what they are able to pull off that Night Stalker. And Lich, once again, will be taken out by Zul. Yeah, so I mean, I'd like to see this Lich get picked up by like a team and actually played. Um, I know that he's very strong at the moment, but still, it's nice to see him actually get picked up. Nonetheless, we will also see a bounty hunter get banned up by Yolo Solo Mid, so this is very interesting. It leaves quite a lot of uh, those common heroes in the pool. There's still the Bat Rider, there's still the Elder Titan, um, there's still that Naga Siren. Yeah, who, yeah it's uh, I'm quite curious to see exactly who picks up what here. I mean, you can only ban one of those left here for Azure, and they might even decide to go, no, we don't want to ban any of those, we want to see all of those in the pool. Um, but yeah, we'll see exactly how this rolls. Currently, there's OD, so we won't see any OD play, but we'll see exactly what gets picked up here by Yellow Solar Mid. I'm a little surprised uh, why Sam didn't take out that Elder Titan. They will pick up a Darkseid as he didn't make it through those bands, but I don't know. We, if we see Azura pick up an Elder Titan again, he offered a lot of damage early on last game, and it just helped keep Yellow Solar Mid down, especially in that bottom lane. But it does make it through, we might see him get picked up, we might not. There's still that Naga Sign, as we did mention, who offers a lot of damage. But a Naga Sign with an Elder Titan could be quite scary if Azura want to go down that route. Ten seconds remaining. Yeah, I mean... I think it's time to, to pick up their first hero, or well, their first two heroes. But they do still have quite a lot of options to go through. An Elder Titan, as you, as you were saying, very strong pickup. They might even pick up that Timber Sword, who would just worked so well for them last game as well. Um, yeah, they have a lot of options here. Or they might just roll a Crystal Maiden. I mean, it was... Oh, there we go. There's the Naga Siren. Um, nothing too surprising there. We did sort of expect them to pick may, pick that, that up at, uh, in combination with something else, maybe like that ET. But, I mean, this this is quite sh interesting. We still have Batrider in the pool as well. He did receive a nerf in the last patch. But I still think he's relatively strong. He still has that lesser which goes through BKB. He can still deal a ton of damage very quickly. I agree, but at the same time... Actually, we will see that. Barrett, as you mentioned, one of the problems though is his auto-attack damage at the start of the game, just, it hurts him a little bit into that early phase of the game. Especially if you're trying to jungle on the Batrider, you aren't able to auto-attack down his creeps and it just delays your farming just a little bit more. And the harassment in the early game in your lane also gets reduced a fair bit. I mean, 12 damage at the start of the game is quite hefty. I think it puts Batriders down as one of the lowest auto-attacking heroes in the game. Uh, don't quote me on that, but he's one of the lowest now due to that nerf. But as you said, he's still strong. That lasso range being 100 means you have to be spot on on target. If you're not spot on and you miss that lasso, you're as good as dead. And they're just going to turn on you and pick you off. And we will see a gyrocopter being picked up in Yoso mid. That, he's called out on top of the Darkseer. That's going to hurt. That illusion wall of replicas plus the ensnare coming, or the snare coming from that cooldown will just do a lot of damage and a lot of control in these fights. And that's what I think Yoso mid need because they didn't have that last fight, last game. Yeah, I was actually just about to say Yellow yeah, Summer Mid. It looks like they're banning out their entire lineup that they had last game, except that now they just ban a clockwork as well, so a little bit different. But yeah, I mean, that's the way that they played that last game as well, and they decided to ban it out this time around. All the time gets banned out there by Azua. Um, but there's still that Timbersaw in the pool, which worked wonders for them last time. We still have. Uh, life Stealer as well. So there's still quite a lot of those strong heroes in this pool, particularly just due to the how the bands have been going out so far. I mean, um, you know, the Night Stalker and the and the Bounty Hunter band by Yellow Sun Mid there left a lot of those usual first round pickups in the in the pool and we do see a lot of them get picked up like, you know, the Night Siren and Bat Rider and, and whatnot. Um but we'll see exactly what is your decide to pick up here as their first choice in the second phase of picks. 
Um, there's still a lot of strong heroes in the pool. That Rubik ban, a little bit interesting. I'm, I'm a little surprised they maybe didn't want to pick that up themselves. There's still, you know, you can still have some good abilities from the other sort of mids lineup, like that dry from the dry cop to the cooldown, and also the dark star, obviously, obviously vacuum or the ultimate. It just looks like the other sort of mid are going to go for more of a team orientated wombo combo style. Um, so I think that Rubik maybe would have been nice, but as you are, they don't want to see it on the field, so they just kind of ban it out. Mm. And I feel as this is what Yellow Soul Mid they need to do. Their ganking lineup, it didn't work. So if you go for this team fighting style lineup, it's going to offer them a lot more, mo well, I wouldn't say mobility, but offer them a lot more presence in these fights. Whereas last game, they had no presence. They had all these heroes that are good at pickoffs, find these uh, solo heroes, find these all these kills around the map, but they couldn't do it. They couldn't find any of them. They were forced into this team fighting lineup against Azura. They kept putting the pressure on, and they just had nothing to show for it. They couldn't do anything. But with the lineup they are building, it's going to have a lot of damage. It's going to have a lot of synergy. I'm still hoping I see my true and one and only hero in this game, Jakiro, get picked up to synergize with the rest of their lineup because it, he's a fantastic support. And Jakiro with Darkseer is, in my opinion, one of the number one combos in this game. Yeah, I know that you dream of that Jakira. But we'll see a Vistage pick up, so it looks like your dreams may be dashed. They've still got another support to pick up, um, you know, from Yellow Solar <laughs> Mid, but who knows, who knows? You I don't know. Fingers crossed, but we'll I mean, see. I mean, Visage and Jakira can work out quite well. You have a Soul Assumption, Ice Path, Dual Breath. Oh. Come on. <laughs> yeah, definitely, that's true. Um,. And also, you know, in you know, those team fights, when you've got so much damage in terms of AoE, you can certainly get those soul assumption stacks coming out very quickly. And of course, you've got your uh, your familiars, which can stun up and knock down some heroes. As you are, though, they're looking to be a lot more roamy this game. You've got that life stealer who loves to pull on aggression, and depending on what sort of item choices they go, um, if they go for an early minus, it means they just want to sit back and farm up a little bit. But if they pick up something like an early mi uh Early mice, an early armlet or uh, early drums. Potentially, they can you know start roaming around the map, infest into something, and uh, yeah, we'll see. Maybe they'll pick up something that like a storm spirit mid to go with that life stealer or, or a puck or something like that. It totally beat me to it. I was gonna say something about a storm spirit, but you already threw it out there. A storm spirit would work quite well, being able to get on in there, and it goes with the kind of style that they're going for at the moment. They've got all these heroes that are good at single target. I mean, Batrider, he's gonna grab one here. Life steal, he's gonna rip through one here. Nagasan being able to hold that one here in place no matter what. And we do see a Jakiro, not on the team I thought it would be, but this could be a counter pick or this could be a very nice pickup for a zero to start off with. But he's going to offer a lot in these fights, he's going to offer a lot of lockdown, and Jakiro with the Naga Siren is also a fantastic combo in itself, because some of the Siren, then you get to line up your Macro Pi and Ice Path to be able to do the full effectiveness and demo uh, damage combination there. Ten seconds remaining. Yeah, um, I wasn't expecting a Jakiro to pick up, but... It means that as you are, they would do want at the very least something in the in those team fights to to be able to line up a lot of damage. Their life still a pick as well, of course. Um, it does mean that there's a lot lot less magic damage that could be going out on their big hero. We do see a park pick up here from Yellow Solo Mid. So we were talking about how you know Yellow Solo Mid they want that team oriented lineup, and this looks exactly it. Uh, you get a good dark sea vacuum for out with a coil and a and a cooldown, and you can just decimate an entire lineup. Puck deals so much damage very quickly. Um, Timbersaw gets banned out there. Interesting. Um, I would have thought as your mate have actually wanted to pick him up here, but looks like they don't want to see him in the game, or at least uh, not in this match. And uh, he does get banned out. Quite interesting. Do you think uh, Yellowstone mid here will just try to ban out as a, a, not a support, a. Um, uh, a mid hero here or, or something else? I think I'm not too sure because I mean at the moment uh, Azure they can throw that bat right mid and he can work his way up against a puck quite easily because a puck with a few stacks of napalm I mean you can't avoid all of them with your phase shift and even so Batrider will just completely harass you out of the lane. So Batrider's got a nice shot against Puck Rider. Oh, Puck Rider. He's got a nice shot against Puck if they do want to decide to land him in mid but you don't necessarily expect a Batrider to be mid. He is on the dire side, which means jungling is going to be a little bit harder for that Batrider. 
Uh, they could run a two on two. It could work. You have an ensnare with the constant napalm stack in from the bat runner. The Chikiris with the life steal. I don't know. The Azud, they've got this lineup that can adjust to how they want to play, and it's very open ended. It really comes down to how, who they feel will be the best against this puck. At the moment, bat rider can work fantastic, but if they want someone else, such as maybe a Queen of Pain, a TA, or whoever they want to run in that mid road go against that puck who would be better than a bat rider they could do that or they could go greedy maybe pick up another semi carry which would possibly be the role and run two on two i don't know but azura they've got a very open-ended lineup to how they want to play at the moment um yeah i'm as you were saying uh, i'm Sort of like to see a battle in a two one two just to see if they set, see how well it works. I mean, just look at this lineup from Yellow Silver Mid. Besides the Darks here, there really isn't all that much escape. Um, if you put uh, put the Darks here and one of the other heroes in a lineup where maybe it's like up against a Visage and a Gyrocopter or something like that, um, and just get all of those Napalm stacks, you get a stun down from the Ice Bath or even from the Net, then it's going to be really tough for them to get away, and you can just slow them down to the point when they can't move um, and just to finish them off with with a lot of damage because Bat Rider he still deals a ton of damage he might not have the, as much right click potential but that Firefly can still uh, be very very painful well I don't know we'll see, we'll see exactly how they decide the lane is they do pick up a Shadow Fiend who I suspect will be in the mid lane since there's this lifestyle here um, we saw Shadow Fiend being played as a carry uh, last night I think maybe um, maybe I'm wrong I don't know but, uh, yeah, it's usually you see it in the mid lane. I don't believe it was last night. I think it may have been Monday night or Tuesday night. Whenever he cast. But yeah, it was a little bit ago. And then it was also that Shadow Fiend that got completely obliterated by an IR. That's one night I'm not going to forget. But um, so far. That was... Yeah, I think that was a Saturday. Oh man, I don't know. It's been a lot of games. <laughs> so, both teams have selected their heroes. I'm not quite sure how I feel with the Shadow Fiend, though. I mean, it does work well with the Naga Siren, but he can get easily picked off in the fight as he's quite squishy, and against the team lineup of Yoasel mid, he'll fall quite fast. But if Azura get that first initiation with that Song of the Siren off, or that Batrider's Lasso, then the Shadow Fiend will pay off. Against a Puck in mid on 1v1, I think if Puck gets timely face shifts, Puck will be able to win that lane, especially if, uh, with that superior auto attack damage at the start and shut down any souls gathered by that soul still. Uh, Shadow Fiend, oh my god, I don't know why that came out. Um, by that Shadow Fiend, but Selfless, he showed us what he can do last game, he showed the potential he has, so I'm not going to put it past him to be able to get those uh, stacks of souls up and running. Um, how do you feel about this Crystal Maiden? Do you think this is going to be a an aggressive trying from your from yellow to the mid because you've got your visage you can he's got the soul assumption you can deal a lot of damage early on you've got the tricopter who can fry his rocket barrage and if it lands on the hero or if most of them most of the hits land on the hero you can just decimate anyone and a uh, crystal maiden you just get the extra lockdown and whatnot do you think it's maybe an aggressive trial here or a trialing or some sort I think they will go for a try because I mean Darks here, he's going to have himself a field day uh, up that top lane by himself. I mean, being able to get creeps in the jungle for that XP, being able to be in that lane itself for the gold and XP, they don't really need anyone to help him out there. And as you're talking about with that aggressive try lane, if you have a Visage, even though with all the nerfs to the XP, you still want an aggressive try lane purely because Katy Perry works best of your supporting teammates. And if you have two other heroes there to help build up those charges and to find yourself a kill. It's going to be extremely effective, so... I, I really feel as if the, the Zaj screams try lane. If they don't go for that try lane, they're not going to be utilizing Katy Perry properly. And, um, I guess we should uh, introduce the teams here. On the side of Yellow Solemi, we do have their captain, Roisy, playing the Darks here. He's going to the top lane. We do have Nevdi on the puck, going to mid. Pudding Head is currently going to mid. Looks like he's mostly just for warding. Um, as we said, we expect him to be in the tri lane. Uh, we do have Woundwalk on that Dracopter, and last but not least, we've got KD Perry on the Visage. And over on the side of Azur, we have Sito, who will be flying away on that Jakiro. Next to his fellow support of Six, who will be rotating top lane, so we will be seeing a 2 1 2 coming on the side of Azur. In mid lane, we have Hal dropping all the iron branches, because he don't, he don't need no branch. 
in top lane, you've got Solf Solfless, he will be on that Shadow Fiend. And finally, you have down the bottom lane, Caboose will be on that Life Stealer. Yeah, I mean, this this is another 2 1 2 here from Azure. Um, I don't know, this is a little bit interesting. It's. We've sort of seen this double safe lane sort of a thing um, a little bit more. Generally, you, you see a Lich there just because that way you can, you know, always have the creep, uh, creep equilibrium in your advantage. But by having like, essentially two safe lanes because the equilibrium's essentially equal all the time, and this life stealer as well, he doesn't do too bad in that bottom lane as long as he's got a support because Ray just ensures that he's fine. But it seems a little bit greedy from Azure. It seems like they want to get as much farm around the map um, as possible on these two big heroes and also still ensure that Batrider gets his level 6 up and um, that quick blink dagger. And 6, he already gets a counter ward down and gets rid of Yellowstone's vision on that top river. So, very nice coming out by 6. That's going to shut down a little bit of vision. So, any rotate, rotating ganks coming from that top line, especially for that Naga Siren, will sh possibly be a lot more effective because Nefty will not necessarily have that vision, especially if it's night time. We have getting close to find himself a kill. And that's 50 gold going the way of 6, which is quite useful early on, especially since usually you're starved in gold. Yeah, definitely. Um, the uh, you do get the extra gold now from Observer Awards, as you were mentioning, which is just fantastic because it just means there's going to be more dewarding and the vision's much more important. We actually see Pudding Head just moving into the jungle, um, to kill off some creeps, which is quite interesting. Uh, so Crystal made in the jungle. Haven't I can't say I've really seen that, but we'll see how well it works out. Roids in the top lane has gone in on six a little bit, just dealing quite a bit of damage from the Iron Shell. Well, so far it's working out quite well. He's going to hit level two, so. He's already ahead of all the other supports in the game, and he's got more gold than him, so Pudding Head knows what he's doing in that jungle, looking for those big camps and taking them off quite easily. And so far, Batrider, as I presumed, is beating Nev Nevdi in that mid lane. It's 3-0 on Nevdi against 7-3 for Batrider, and Batrider's just trying to get as much damage as possible on Nevdi. Nevdi, if he knew something, if, if he knew he was going up against a Batrider mid, he would have picked up a, a magic stick, but unfortunately he presumed Shadowfin would go there, but Shadowfin's had himself a little bit of a field day up top. He's getting a few last hits here and there, working his soul st stacks up and running. It's up to six, so his last hits will be getting a little bit stronger. Yeah, and it's just it's uh, sort of how we were talking about how we far uh, as you are. Uh, do want to be a little bit greedy. Even in the bottom lane, we see Caboose on the lifestyle just seeing out nine last hits, which is uh, quite a bit more than the Jirocop. There's only on five here. The thing that this does though, it, he also only made, they're going to, particularly on this Visage, they're going to have a little bit of a hard time because he's not going to be able to find many kills, you can't soul assumption anything if there's no damage being put out and I think the Visage won't be as effective as they were hoping um, he would be in the early game. I'm a little bit scared, there's a two and a half minute boots up at a Crystal Maiden, that's just not really right. <laughs> World first right here. Crystal Maiden with boots at three minutes. Crystal Maiden with boots before uh, 20 minutes. What is this? <laughs> but he's Why doing quite well in here. Um, yeah, I mean, he's actually getting a decent amount of farm um, and some good levels as well. I mean, he's also got more last hits than his carry on this Gyrocopter. Gyrocopter's unfortunately 5 for 2 and Crystal Maiden sits 7 for 0. So... Well, that shows you how this bottom lane's going and how well Crystal Maiden's going at the same time, but I'm a little bit surprised that One Walk is having this much problems in this bottom lane. I mean, he doesn't have that Visage to help him in that lane, but a Visage can't really do anything against Caboose and Situ. If Situ wants to do anything, he can throw that Ice Puff, then you've locked down One Walk. You can have an Open Wounds into an Ice Puff, and then he's gone. So, One Walk has to play so defensive, he's not getting anything out of these lanes. Up at top lane, put in head, he's smoked up top. They're going to be looking at 6, they see him in the daytime vision. There comes that f Crystal Nova and Frostbit. He's going to throw that in a snare, unfortunately ruins. He's too far away to get a little bit of damage. He does surge off put in head. Put in head is the carry of the team so far, but he's going to be a little careful as he's very squishy and a few raises will pick him off from that full health and we will be seeing a pullers coming out from Roidzy. Yeah, um, they tried the gank there, it didn't quite work out as they were hoping. Um, Six was able to get a nice net on Roidzy and Roidzy just 
The ion shell damage uh, didn't really do much. Um, six just by the well moved back, by the way. But this is. I like this rotation here from um, from putting head on the crystal maiden. Level three starts rotating, starts moving around. Um, has the boots as as we mentioned before. But this is I haven't seen a jungle crystal maiden. Um, but it's quite interesting. It means early level. If they went for bottom. Um, they could have probably been a little bit more aggressive against Situ and Caboose. I'm not sure if they would have been able to still find a kill or anything, but at the very least now, Pudding Head can rotate through the lanes as he does have some of that, uh, the experience and whatnot, which he probably would have been fighting Katy Perry on the Visage in the bottom lane uh, otherwise. But one of the biggest problems about Pudding Head finding that solo XP is one walk, he's taken a little bit of. Uh... Uh, did into Heath Farm because of it, because he's been zoned out of the lane by Situ and Caboose. So if you had that Crystal Man there, being there a little bit more aggressive, holding their zone and making their presence known on the field, then one walk would have been able to come in and get a few more last hits. I mean, he's sitting on nine for three. He's effectively half of the other three lane, uh, main lane dominators on the op opposing team: Shadowfin, that last dealer, and that Batrider. So he's taken a hit. How much will this affect him into the mid game? It will soon find out, but. We do have Puddin' Head. He's sitting behind the field. They're going to come in on Howe. Unfortunately, they knew he was there as a nice ward on top of this ramp does reveal that Puddin' Head before he can do too much. And Six was here if things did get too bad. He's also got boots of his own. All these supports, their quick boots. Um, but it looks like Six has decided to roam a little bit, which isn't too bad of an idea. Currently in the top lane, you know, it's not like Sophos is having too many issues with this uh, Dark Seer at the moment. In fact, we might see a jump on Nevdi. Nice we'll yes, sorry. And we will see the burn down. They did do a nice initiation. I'm a little bit surprised that was able to happen though. I mean, Puck's got so many abilities to be able to escape that, but Power just flew on in and lassoed, and there's just nothing Puck could do about it. Yeah, I mean, he had about four stacks of Napalm, I believe it was, at the time. Um, the Firefly in, and then Lasso just... It was a nice pick-off there, and it's uh, an important one. Having a Batrider get a kill off it as early as possible in this game um, makes that Blink Dagger just much more quicker. You know, he's level 7 already, he can start being more present around the map if he wants to. And it also sets Nevdi back. He's level 6, but it means his Blink Dagger is delayed, his farm's delayed, and he's... He's sitting for 23 last hits, which isn't actually too bad against his bat rider. He was doing much worse earlier on. Mm. And down this bottom lane, C2 will be camping this rune for that bat rider. Bat rider's just going to rotate down there with that shag back. Here he has got some wards for C2. And Visage did actually deny that rune. So he sneaks on past yeah, and denies that rune. So nice deny coming out by Katy Perry. And now they're going on Caboose. Caboose does have to Caboose. rage and he's going to walk away from out of the... Yeah, uh... But, but this is a little bit strange because, you know, Visage doesn't have a lockdown. He, the Soul Assumption is great if you get... Puddinghead throws out that first bit onto Sidhu. Sidhu gets that Crystal Nova to the face. Katy Perry is going to throw out that Grave Chill at the same time. Caboose is going on one walk. They will find the kill on Sidhu. They're going to turn around. Does Caboose have enough to find one walk? Does he have the movement speed? He's got more than enough movement speed. And we'll get that auto attack with his face. But Caboose, he's going to turn around. He says, I'm more than what you two can handle. He's going to try and find it. He does have an infest if he gets too much in danger. And he will actually infest out of there. And... Nothing these two supports can do about it now. He will get fully healed after he comes out of that infest. Yeah, basically, you know, with the help of those phase boots, it really allowed Caboose to ensure that he was able to get those last few right clicks on um, Woundwalk. A little bit unfortunate there, but they were able to pick off a kill on Situ before Woundwalk died, so it's a little bit of experience in, in gold. Um, at the same time, though, you really don't want your carry to be dying, particularly to the life stealer who's already doing quite well. Yeah, I feel this is this came down from the fact that one walk got no farm at the start. If he had his face boots of his own, he would have been able to escape a life stealer after that. Uh, uh, what's the word? 
after the open wounds fell off because they both have the same movement speed roughly. Lifesteal, he's got 365 when he's not using those face boots, which he currently was, and one look, he doesn't have his face boots and he runs at 365. If he had those face boots from that little bit of extra gold, he would have been able to escape Caboose, but that's just, that's all guessing and estimating purely because they weren't able to help that Gyrocrop to get that little bit of gold in that lane, so... I don't know, it's, it's just one of those small things that costed him because he just couldn't get that far and get those boots up as fast as he needed. Yeah, it's not looking too good for him. I mean, if we look at the net worth, he's only seeing out... He's about to hit 2.2k, but the rest of them, the rest of the big three on the side of Azure are all above 3k, so... He really needs something to start cashing up to this because eventually he's just going to get completely out-farmed and... Um, Surely they have the team fight potential and whatnot, which can help turn it around. But at the same time, you do want a lot of farm that dry copter as much as possible. And yeah, Shadow Fiend, the guy we haven't been mentioning all game, he's gonna start working to a very early BKB. He's picked up his Ogre Club. Ogre Club nine minutes is a pretty solid time, and this should relatively add out to about uh actually i hear a fa uh dream call going on mid lane house taking a lot of damage pudding head is here to help him out the dream call will snap a sole assumption coming out from kate perry so they are sharing the gold around but i think nev d wanted that the most he wants to go towards his blink dagger so he's going to miss out a little gold but they do find a kill on how and that's in the end all that matters and all that you need situ will try and hold off this mid lane but he's not going to be able to do too much he might pick up a few creep kills himself Fortunately, I think he's probably one of the only supports that doesn't have boots in the game. He is the only support, so... Poor Jakiro, but nevertheless, Azur, they're still in a very comfortable position. Oh, definitely. I mean, it's nice to see how the yellow minus even it up there, particularly there on that kill. Nevdi, it was a kill that Nevdi needed himself, just for the extra experience on gold. It means his blink dagger is a little bit quicker. He's actually not seen too far away from it, about 400 gold, uh, a little bit less, but... Yeah, once he has a blink dagger, he can certainly start roaming around the map more. He's also going to pick up a haste rune. Um, looks like he doesn't want to rotate into another lane to maybe cause a little bit of havoc. Looks like he just wants to go back to mid. Once he has a blink dagger, then he wants to start creating some plays. Darkseer, he's decided to rotate in the jungle. He's going to be working towards that mechanism. So it's not going to be that fast mechanism you see from a lot of Darkseer's pure because he hasn't had the best of lands. He has been a little bit harassed by that Shadow Fiend with all those raises, keeping him out of that harassment range on top of six. Six is rotating around, he's got his fast arcane boots up and running, so he's going to be looking for trying to find some more ganks. Don't think they'll be fine in mid anytime soon, as there's a nice ward coming down the side of the yellow, so I'm mid watching any rotations through there, so they don't get caught out unexpectedly once again. Pudding Head is up on top by himself, he's got Tranquil Groot, he's going to be working a little bit of farm for himself, so a little bit of farm when your Crystal made by yourself won't hurt. But what will hurt is the three heroes that are up here, or waiting in mists for Pudding Head to take one step out of place. Yeah, this is... Hopefully he's not going to be like, yeah, I can get a few more last hits and go in there. Uh, Pudding Head... And he gets ensnared. In there. There's the how with... <laughs> it throws out that freezing field, they even pop the lasso to finish him off. A little bit unnecessary, but they got the kill on Shadow Fiend, and that's completely necessary. And now we do might see Puck going on mid lane on C2. He doesn't decide to jump on in there. He didn't have enough mana for too much follow up, and he will at least face shift that ice path. Yeah, in the in the bottom lane, we still see a little bit of uh, just the the support. Well, the support. So carries just trying, trying to farm. Puzzle farm up as much as possible. Um, Windwalk, he's starting to catch up a little bit. He's sitting at 44 last hits now, where Lifestealer uh, at 52, so it's not as big of a difference, of the, although Lifestealer does have a kill to his name, which also helps. Um, but at the same time, you know, that gap isn't as large as it was before. Drycopter now has his phase boots. He will start moving on towards some of those bigger items relatively soon, I suspect. And K. Perry and Roidzi here, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they start moving around and try to crank some players. Roidzi, he's almost got that... Yeah, he's almost got the, uh... The mecha here. Should just be able to buy the recipe and pick it up.
And he's going to have to hope it comes from soon. There's two smoke supports up on bottom lane with Caboose, which means they will find a kill. Once the snare goes out, they're going to have a kill locked down, even with the TPs coming on in. And they're going to find one look. One look. He doesn't get ensnared. It got cancelled multiple times by six. That's a little bit unfortunate. One look will get out of there. He's going to be quite happy with that. He's building towards a BKP of his own. He's got an Ogre Club. He'll pick that up a little bit later, I'd say, about the way his farm's going. 15, 16 minute mark. And... Speaking of BKB, Sulfurus, he's got only 900 gold before he's got his BKB, and then you might start seeing him in a little bit more of these fights. But at the moment, Azur, they're going to be pushing this bottom tower. Both familiar stones coming off lane of Caboose, just, just warding him off. Yeah, this is... There's, there's three heroes here, and at any time... If At top lane, Nevdi, he jumps on Sulfur. Sulfur takes a lot of damage. We do see that face. If he gets back to him in, they will find the kill. And Puck's luckily out of there. He could have fallen from the final Requiem of Soul's death. But that's a kill that Yellow Soul Mid will happily pick up. Caboose is now up here. And, well, they're going to change lanes. And they're going to start rotating against these two heroes up top. And they've already decided we're going to get on out of here. We don't really need to stay around and die. And that just gives one walk a little bit more space to farm, and that's what he needs. At the same time, Batrider Hell now has his blink dagger coming in on this courier. Um, that kill actually was wonderful for Yellow Sun because it forced Caboose out into the top lane. It means that one walk is able to, well, not just one walk, but here with Katy Perry, they were able to push out the lane a little bit. He was able to get Fire some free really yes, It'll be on the run because we got blink. And he comes in, he's not close enough because of that nerfed lasso range, he wasn't able to stand on top and get that lasso. He will fight on Kate Perry who decided to stay around and enjoy the heat that Hal has on offer and he will fall from Shadow Fiend and his razors. Yeah, um, not sure why he stayed for that long, he should have really turned around much earlier um, once he saw that one walk was fine and just completely backed off, but it's it's a kill that is yours certainly um, love and I mean, yeah, they're not gonna allow any sort of those mistakes to, to go unpunished. In fact, they're still going on this tower, but they're gonna have to be a little bit careful because we might see some. T in fact, we do see a lot of TP supports coming in now. And the TP, we got the blink in. We do not have the drinker. Well, actually, we do have it available. Cooldown is not gonna land on Sophos. It does land on Caboose. Caboose gets vacuumed in. Rage is still on cooldown. Kitty arm um, toggle his way to victory. He doesn't need to. He jumps inside the creep. Hal's here to try and help him out. Caboose comes out, but I think he came out a little bit too early. No, he didn't. Six is here to save the day with the anti fun song of the siren. But actually, there's still a little bit of initiation. The flame yeah. break pushes them back. We see the dual breath lands on Crystal Maiden, but he does get surged out of there. But that surge will save Crystal Maiden. The mechanism is popped. Will be enough to keep him alive. He does have three stacks of snare pump. Can they find those last two auto attacks? The snare comes out. Can they get the auto attacks? They do get the auto attacks eventually. Actually, no, they don't. He's still on the run. The liquid fire, not enough to pick him off. Six might die. Meanwhile, the Visage of Familiar is coming around. They do have a lot of stacks of damage up on them, and they do do enough to pick off that hero. So, Situ and Howard now flying their way in retreat and you also admit they came out advantages on that team fight yeah that actually went really well for them they weren't able to pick up caboose which is very unfortunate he's he did I, um i'm not toggling his way a little bit out of there but and also the song of siren there certainly saved him um and sure they was able to get away but that was that was a good reversal. It looked like Azure, they wanted that tier 1 tower. There was a lot of TPs coming in. Um, they locked down... They locked down Softless on the Shadow Fiend with the help of those familiar stuns. And from then on, they really started capitalizing a few kills. It was just some great play there. And it's... Uh, considering you know, the early game farm hasn't been so great for him, um, it certainly helps, helps them come back a little bit in terms of experience and gold. And now we see a lot of items being picked up. Shofu now has his BKB. Fam uh, not familiars. Visage now has that amulet or medallion of courage. That's the word I was looking for. Medallion of courage. They've got a lot of negative armor coming at them. So it should help that gyrocopter to be able to rip through those heroes a little bit more. But Shadowfiend and his negative aura does pretty much the same thing, but at a reduced cost. And then mid lane, Caboose is taking a lot of damage. He gets silenced up. The lasso will come out. Nefty, Nefty's going to be pulled back. He's going to get ripped to shreds. Will he be able to get on ever? No, he won't, unfortunately. There's a vacuum back into the Macropire. Macropire is on their side. We do see life still going out for that puck. So it's a fantastic trade so far, Yellow so mid. Can they get on ever before they lose too much more? We do have that surge being coming out. Cooldown's going to be defensively. It does land once. There's the ensnare. We're going to see a turnaround on that BKB. But he's taking a lot of auto attack damage. Both of the carries will fall on both 
storage sites. And now there's a lot of supports. So the supports, however, for Yoso mid, they're almost all dead. They will drop those two supports, and now Rhodesy's on the run out of here. So unfortunately for Yoso mid, they will to lose two extra heroes, but luckily it only goes to the supports and Batrider of Azura. So fairly even, but in favor of Azura. Yeah, I mean, they have, they jumped on Caboose, and there was, they didn't see Situ, and I believe it was Hal there as well, just sitting behind that tier 1 tower, and the moment they, the moment they jumped on Situ, Nevdi got pounced on by the blink, by the lasso, and Azure started to turn around, and then Yasuo the mid, they came back, it was a nice wall from Roidzi, it, uh, and also the cooldown as well. It was unfortunate there that the Dryocopter died. If he was able to survive a little bit longer, or if he survived the uh, the death from Shadow Fiend, of course, you know, Shadow Fiend dies and also likes to do a little bit of damage just before he leaves. Um, that fight could have gone certainly a different way. But great play there by both sides. As you are, as you said, barely coming out on top. Uh, it was certainly a close battle. Shadow Fiend is going to push up his tower. He does pick up an easy 100 gold from one of those familiars dying. He might pick up a second one quite here. He gets auto attacking. No, he's just gonna run. He's not gonna worry about it. But at the same time, how in Fest Bomb flying on the side of the map. They're gonna be looking for a kill. They found that kill. Katy Perry will be burnt down. She will blow up like fireworks. And now they're gonna get this lane. There will be TP coming in from his puck. Puck shouldn't be able to do too much by his lonesome self. He's gonna try, but he's gonna be extremely careful. There's gonna be more TP support coming in. We do have that dark side science going down to how how will get hit by that dream coil. They are they gonna try and rotate in from Azure to help him out? They're just gonna let him fall. In the meanwhile, they'll try and get this tier one tower. They get it and they're gonna get on out of this. So, a bat rider for a tier one tower. At this stage of the game, they needed that tier one tower to get rid of it. So it it is worth it. Yeah, they even picked up that kill on KV period, so it's I mean, it's a one for one train in terms of kills, but they also picked up a tier one tower for themselves, which also gives them the ability to roam around the map much more. Um, and of course, the extra gold just certainly helps. I mean, if you look at the gold graph, which we haven't really looked at too much this game, um, it is over 4k in advantage of Azure, and experience is only about what three three and a half k ish. Which isn't all that much. We've seen the XP graph actually be a little bit up and down just because of some of those fights um, going one way or another. But yeah, I mean, Yellowstone Mid are trying to hold their own as much as possible, and they're not doing too bad, but they really have to start capitalizing on some towers on their own. In fact, Roy's up here in the top lane. He's gonna get chased by Caboose, but he'll be able to get out. For now, Naga Siren's moving in here as well, though. Rosie's, he's all good. He's not worried at all. He just teleports on the other there. So, Looks like they might want to go for a mid. Yeah, they need to oh, try and get a tower. Mid. As you said, they're going to be trying to get that mid. But at the same time, Shadowfiend is pushing down this bottom lane hard. And they're going to happily trade towers if Shadowfiend wants to keep pushing. Uh, they're going to go fight it. There is a Solar Sun. TP coming in from that life steal. There's three heroes in one place. There goes the Ice Puff. But the nice phase shift before that Ice Puff can tick. Then he's taking a lot of damage from cooldown. Six. He will not fall. Mechanism popped off just in time. Keeping him alive. Dream Call lands onto two heroes. They have found two kills on that Crystal Man and Darkseid. So far, they're going to be on the retreat and they're going to be continuing on the retreat. Bruce, he wants to get on in there, but he's going to have to stand back. But they found two kills from a nice turnaround coming from that Song of the Siren. Yeah, I mean, that was just a great defense on that tier 1 tower. And then just a reversal, allowing them to keep up two, uh, pick up two kills. They're also going to get this mid tier 1 tower. That is all the tier 1 towers on the side of Yellow Southern mid gone. This is sort of looking like a little bit... Uh, like it happened last game, um, where once those tier 1 towers fell, it's going to be much harder for Yellow Solar Mid to find the farm. Windwalk, is, he's got that BKB, but he's going to need to start getting some damage items up, so he can dish out a, and uh, kill a few heroes in those team fights. Unfortunately, he hasn't been doing amazingly well. He gets picked off himself quite quickly before, and the BKB helps now that he's going to be able to survive. That Roshan, though, is going to get picked up by Azure here. Yeah, there's gonna be a contestant though. No. One walk. He's uh, gonna try and throw down that cooldown. Will be enough damage to find any heroes. It might try and slightly deter him a little bit. The Roshan does go down. The Aegis will be picked up. One walk. He's in the middle of nowhere. He's got a BKB pop, but he's been auto attacked down by Caboose. The lasso is pulled, and they are thrown up on top of that cliff. They have no way of getting down. The Wall is doing so much damage to Selfless. It will find that kill on Selfless. He will buy it back. He's not too happy about that. Puddinghead gets searched away, but not fast enough. Caboose will find that kill. Double damage is ran out by both heroes. Caboose will pick it up, but unfortunately he raises, so he loses that double damage 
pick up, and he's still armor toggling his way. He's still chasing those heroes. Puck will fall. That's four heroes dead on the side of Yellow So Mid. Roidzy, he's in a lot of trouble. We might see a fire fly up this crypt. They're gonna chase him back underneath this tower. He doesn't have a TP for. 15 seconds. He's going to be on the run for a while. We see a blink in. He's going to start stacking it up. He's going to surge once again. He's going to keep trying to run. He still has nowhere to go. He wants to try and deny himself to the tower, but he's a little afraid of those uh, razors coming out. He will be able to get away. Six is just going to end his path. He's going to try and creep block him. They're trying to save this for one of their two more important heroes. Unfortunately, Selfless will not pick it up, but that is a team wipe on Yellow Solo Mid. Yeah, I mean, the Roshan also, the Aegis went to the lifestyle, it wasn't popped there in that low engagement. It's... that was harsh. I mean, the Woundwalk, he ran in there sort of without the rest of his team. Um, you know, he got the... he got the cooldown off, but pretty much right after that, he sort of got picked off by himself. Um, the vacuum wall from Roidzy was phenomenal. Put two heroes up on that cliff, and it put Softless, it just deals, dealt so much damage to him. It's... It was well played, but unfortunately it just wasn't quite enough. Uh, Caboose there was just doing too much damage in that team fight. And now, you also met there, once again, they're, they're having it really tough. Shadow Fiend, he's got 162, 163 creep kills against his name, and yet he's still at the highest. This last, this Caboose is doing phenomenal on this last He's got four kills against his name. He's got the same as Shadow Fiend. I'm surprised that... Caboose is doing a lot. He's going to rage up. He's going to turn to Pudding Head. Pudding Head's going to try and TP on out of it. Will he get on out of it? The Ice Puff, unfortunately, not going to miss. The Ensnare also was not cast. They're going to turn to Nevdi. They're going to not be able to cast that last soap, but they don't need it. Cooldown will land on three heroes. They're going to be on the retreat. Actually, they're just going to run into that rocket. Six doesn't really care about it. And this should be an easy tier two tower. They're missing Puck, their key initiator. And actually, Blink comes on. One walk, one walk's going to be pulled back in. He doesn't have that four stuff available. He's going to pull him outside of that ice path. The BKP will be popped by Gyrocopter. He's trying to auto attack, but he's not doing any auto attack damage. Caboose, he's just going to turn. He's going to attack one walk. One walk's going to take a lot of damage. Will they have enough? They do have enough. And there goes their carry. There goes most of the team. This should be a tier two tower fallen as well. Nice wall being thrown down by Roadsy. He doesn't have a current vacuum from that ridiculous cooldown timer. Macro is doing a little bit of damage. Pudding Head will burn down that Jakir. He's not going to have any of that Fire, ice speeds fire, apparently. And now, Hal, he's actually got a Dagon currently up on him, and he's looking to find some kills. He's going to jump on in, he's going to get Frostbin underneath his tower, he tries to throw that flame break, he's in a lot of trouble, he throws out the Dagon, and Caboose comes in for that auto attack. Roidzy, he's trying to chase down Hal, he will almost fall, he almost died underneath that 5555, ran out of that most inopportune moment. Nevdi, he'll get picked off by that, uh... No, I guess sorry, it was actually standing back at base, but used her illusions. So, she's going to be quite happy with that. And Shadowfin will pick off Visage. And this, this fight's still going on. One more, he runs back in, and he will fall shortly after. So, one more died in two easy consecutive kills. Yeah, he got locked down. He popped his BKB, but that net just basically locked him down long enough for Azure to then engage on him and... That was a really long drawn out fight. As you're coming out on top, and they're just going to get up this tier 2 tower as well. The Aegis there, they did lose the Aegis, um, but they suddenly came out way in the lead. I mean, look at that gold graph. It's dropped. It's down now to about 17 ish K gold advantage. Experience is about 16 K, and that was only in the like, past 5 ish to. Yeah, about 5 minutes ever since that Roshan fight. Um, it's. It's not looking good here for Yellow so Mid. We saw Hal, as you said, he picked up that, uh, the Dagon there, and <laughs> this is, this is quite interesting, because it's going to mean that he can just jump into a fight and pick off one of these heroes very quickly. Uh, Crystal Mane is relatively fragile, looks like it's going for a BKB, but it's going to still be a while before she has hers up, and, uh, yeah, we might see some easy kills on, on with that Dagon. And now there's a group up by Azur, they're going to be walking through this jungle, they're going to be finding a kill. They are spotted out by that lone observer ward up by Yellow Solo Mid. And unfortunately they are not going to be able to de ward that with the Sentry Ward where it currently is. I unfortunately can't click on it because my Dota 2 has bugged out in terms of clicking on wards, which is a little bit of a pain. Actually I can click on those wards, what the hell? That one scumbag ward I can't click on. Anyway, Azul, they will be pushing down this mid lane. You do have that life steal. He's farming up top fat. Too much hassle in the world. He's got 5k gold on him. And he doesn't want to spend it. Money, money, money. That's all he cares about. And kills, but mostly money. Yeah, I'm... 
I'd be surprised if he doesn't pick up a a, uh, a basher here at some point, just because it'll certainly help lock down some of that. You know, you've got your gyrocopter there, that does have that BKB, you can get away if... Uh... Oh, actually, no, he's just going to get a Desolator, he wants more damage. And there's going to be a little bit of smoke up down bottom. They're going to try and initiate under the vacuum comes on in. He's going to try and save that while Song of the Siren says, No way. BKB up. Song of the Siren cancels. All that damage. Puck will get completely burst down. There will go the final two. Uh, the other heroes of Yellow Soul. I mean, they're dying too fast. They will call the GG. Azure, they will be moving on in the defense of the Shrouds. They will be moving into the quarter final rounds, I believe. Yep. So, very well played by Azura, showing us what they are able to pull off, their team compositions, their team lineups, and just being able to make the rotations, being able to take those fights in their lanes when possible. Unfortunately for Yellow Solo Mid, they just they couldn't stand up to it. They lost their lanes, they weren't able to get that farm they needed. One walked, he fell behind beginning purely because he didn't have that support to help him out, and he got harassed himself against the uh, opposing combo. He missed out on a few of those key items, and then he got paid. Oh, he got paid against, oh, that word that I'm trying to think of. He got, what's that word? Wow. Anyway, he got destroyed in, in that lane, and then <laughs> they just capitalized from there on. Yeah, I mean, a great play from his, yeah, it was looking relatively even-ish um, in the early game. Yellow Sailor Media were able to capitalize on some kills, but as you said, um, Caboose in that bottom lane was able to just farm up much more quicker, much more faster than Windwalk. Um, congratulations to Azjeda, as you said, they will be moving on into the quarterfinals. Um, it's yet to be decided who'll be, who they'll be up against. Um, but yeah, I'd just like to say before we leave, thank you guys very much for uh, watching. We do have more games coming up. We've got Venom Gaming up against Big Brown Coconuts in about 40 minutes. It's scheduled at 9.30 Australian Eastern Daylight Time. Um, yeah, I've been Zalarif. I've been joined by Dodo Yoshi, of course. You can follow me at twitch.tv slash Zalarif or on Twitter at Zalarif Dodo. You can follow Yoshi at youtube.com slash Dodo Yoshi or on Twitter at Dodo Yoshi. Thank you very much to Qboss for sponsoring the tournament and thank you very much to the Defense of the Australians admins for hosting it. We'll see you guys in just a little while.